Banks have been a source of confidence for Americans for generations. Now, this is quickly turning out to be the opposite. Thousands of Americans are in a panic, moving their money from one bank to the other while still unsure that their money is safe where it's been moved. Why are Americans losing faith in its banking system? Well, too many banks are failing and are being taken over by regulators. Too quickly, banks are beginning to close their doors. And it isn't just happening to the small and medium-sized banks. Major banks aren't left out either. Why is this happening? And what does it mean for the average American? In this video, you'll see how poor foresight, hasty decisions, and mad panic have succeeded in plunging American banks into a hole that requires so much effort to climb out of. And also, what this downturn will cost Americans. Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, and Western Alliance Bank Corporation are names you recognize without a doubt. For some time now, they've been on the news, and it isn't just because something great has happened there. No, painful to admit, these banks are names associated with the collapse of America's banking system. It doesn't end there. 186 more banks are at risk of failing. If you're wondering what's happening, here's a quick explanation as to how all these started. Our economy hasn't been at its strongest for a while now, and the Federal Reserve is watching. What did they do to help? The Federal Reserve increased interest rates by 0.25% to fight inflation. This resulted in the reduction of the value of bank assets like government bonds, bank capital reserves, and mortgage bank securities. That's because government bonds lose their value when interest rates increase. What this means for banks which have government bonds is that their assets are now worth less. Many banks use a larger portion of their money to invest in stocks instead of having it stored as cash. Usually, this is a wise and safe investment option. That's until something like the Fed Reserve increasing prices happen. Stocks drop painfully low and this causes some banks to sell their bonds at a loss. When big time investors and those with serious money hear of it, they take precautions to protect their wealth and move their resources to other safer options. Silvergate Bank, which is focused more on cryptocurrency, was the first to fail when all these started. They announced their closure on March 8th because they were unable to stay afloat after losing so much. When FTX went bankrupt, the money coming in from crypto investors dropped by 60%. This reduced deposits meant that they were unable to meet up with clients' withdrawals. And in just that period, $8 billion in deposits were asked to be withdrawn by clients. Because they had limited cash to match withdrawal requests, Silvergate had to sell its assets when prices were low. There wasn't any way they could have survived this fall. Coming right after the news of the crushing failure of Silvergate, the second biggest bank in America, Silicon Valley Bank failed as well. SVB has been quite instrumental to the tech industry in Silicon Valley. It made it easier for startups to get access to financial services, industry expertise, and a valuable network. Sadly, SVB had to watch helplessly on March 9th of 2023, as $42 billion in deposits were removed out of its care in just a day. The fall of such a big bank came as a shock to many. What hope is there for the smaller ones if the bigger ones are in a shaky condition? This panic paved the way for more banks to begin failing. The fear that one bank's failure can lead to the failure of other banks is what we can see playing out. The SVB did what other banks were doing at the time, purchasing long-term treasury bonds. When interest rates went high, the value of the bonds went down. The high interest rates increased borrowing costs and clients of SVB began withdrawing money to meet their liquidity needs. On March 8, 2023, SVB practically told its customers that their money was no longer safe. What better way to make people panic than letting them know they could be losing the money kept in your care? Clients speedily moved their money, and this caused the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. If the SVB case was handled differently, probably what's going on today would have been avoided. Anyway, shortly after the fall of SVB, Western Alliance Bank Corporation's shares went down a whopping 80%. This action of the Federal Reserve also affects the crypto market and banks, leaning more to the tech side like the Signature Bank took a beating. Account holders at these banks swiftly moved their funds from it when the value of cryptocurrency dropped. This is only the beginning. The former chairman of the FDIC, William Isaac, has this to say about the situation. There's no doubt in my mind. There's going to be more. How many more? I don't know. We do not know how bad this is going to get. The government is working hard to calm the nerves of its people, but it needs to do more. Assuring citizens that a new facility, 
the bank term funding program will be set up to provide liquidity for banks facing problems is a good move. At least we've seen some strong banks lend money to the sum of $30 billion to others at risk of folding for 120 days. If the government doesn't intervene some more, this situation will get much worse. People are already losing faith in the banks, and the government needs to do something. The government needs to put more earning folks into consideration and ensure their money too. The US government has always safeguarded deposits of up to $250,000. This means people with more than that amounts in their bank accounts are at risk of losing their money if something worse happens. And quite a number of Americans have over $250,000 in their accounts. About $88 billion in deposits of Signature Bank have been found to be uninsured. Who's paying for the losses if it gets to that point? This accounts for people moving their money out of banks because they know it's not insured. The economy is in a mess and people have to be assured that the money they've entrusted for safekeeping is in reality safe. Well, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the United States Department of the Treasury did announce that deposits in SVB and Signature Bank would be honored. Americans are grateful for this, but they don't trust the government entirely, and so they're moving their money out regardless of the promises made. Otherwise, an economic catastrophe is looming. It could be to the degree of 2008's case. The Great Recession that happened in that year bears some resemblance to what is currently happening now. But let's not sound gloomy. These are different types, and we would come out of this unscathed, hopefully, to show that therefore the people, the Federal Reserve should hold off raising interest rates any higher for the time being. Sadly, it looks like they're warming up to do just that. Central banks have begun taking measures to calm the situation. They're making more cash available to see that financial transactions continue as they were. Scarcity is just what America does not need at such a time. So central banks are working to raise the cost of borrowing to fight rising prices. There is good news, yeah. The American banking is safe for now. With $3 trillion in assets, equity, and stable deposits, it isn't affected so much by what is happening. It has more than enough to cushion it against unexpected happenings. In the middle of this crisis, the American bank system is assisting other struggling banks. Well, for the average American, this situation should not make you fret a whole lot. So long as you're under the FDIC with a balance not above $250,000, you're covered. The banks will pay for all losses. Really though, how many Americans have $250,000 in their accounts? More than half the population is struggling to buy food on a daily basis. They're not all worried about the stock market and other investments, but investors have a lot to be worried about. To protect themselves, they could open multiple bank accounts within the $250,000 limit to ensure that they're insured. But because they aren't, and the risk of losing money is so high, the rushed withdrawal is what we have. Nice time to not be rich, right? Generally, this crisis will have an effect on the economy that will affect everyone, rich or not. When the finances are not stable, demand will reduce, and this will lead to low production. Low production translates to a struggling economy. Recession is a word that drives fear into the hearts of many. It will only be a matter of time before this becomes our reality if prompt measures aren't put in place. This should start with the banks. Regulations have to be made that protect the bankers' money, regardless of how little they've put in their accounts. The government has to be very careful and work closely with the Federal Reserve to come up with a solution that favors all Americans. In the meantime, do what you have to protect your money. Invest in silver and gold or real estate, assets that are stable in the midst of an unstable economy.